A vehicle superiority is demonstrated either by its ability to do things other vehicles cannot, or by its ability to do things better than other vehicles can. Maybe it's cheaper. Maybe it gets better mileage. Maybe it's able to haul more weight at greater speeds. Maybe it brakes more effectively. Maybe it handles better or more effectively protects its passengers in the event of an accident. Maybe it holds up better under the same wear. In other words, its superiority as a vehicle is demonstrated objectively in the way it does a better job of meeting the same standards. The superiority of a vehicle, if true, can be demonstrated without asking anyone to begin with the assumption that it is true. By the same token, a superior argument is one that does a better job than others of holding up under skeptical scrutiny. It does a better job of meeting the same standard, and therefore has no reason to ask for a different standard. It is therefore clear to me that, if every single person in the world were to grow up receiving equal exposure to all religions, the vast majority of us would find one no more impressive than another. One thing I know for certain is that I have subscribers who are Christian, and others who are Muslim. As far as I know, they have inherited these labels. This tells me that had they been born under Judaism instead, they would all just as easily be Jewish. This is the kind of internal inconsistency one finds in many a creationist argument. Many creationist theists will point to something that just happens to work as proof that their position must be correct, but then will point to something that doesn't work as proof that my position cannot be. Ray Comfort himself has recycled the insistence that there must be a god to have created the universe because things don't just pop into existence out of nothing. He has even gone so far as to offer a cash reward to anyone who can offer proof of this happening. But what if such a thing were to happen? What if something were to pop into existence out of nothing? How would he react? He would point and say, Behold! The hand of the Creator! What more proof could you possibly ask for? Or something to that effect. When I began on YouTube, I did not call myself an atheist. I call myself an agnostic, because of course one cannot prove that no gods exist. As far as I could tell, atheism and deism were equally strong positions to hold. I was torn between them, and so found the label agnostic more comfortable. Now before I continue, I should clarify, different people have different ideas of deism. So let me just take a moment to explain what the term meant, and what it still means, to me. I had one foot in non-belief, and one foot in belief in a design, but not a design for the benefit of humanity, nor a design that precluded natural processes. I was open to the idea of a god who related to humanity in much the same way that a baker relates to his yeast. The yeast does not understand, understand the will of the baker, and it would be the height of absurdity for one yeast to presume to tell another about his personal relationship with the baker. Bakers don't make friends with yeast. But by the same token, the yeast is unable to avoid abiding the will of the baker. The baker mixes in the yeast, understanding better than the yeast possibly could the effect his presence will have. The baker knows what the final outcome will be, and the yeast is a tool he recognizes to that end. I believe this could be called theistic determinism. This whole explanation I found delightfully nuanced and so much fun to contemplate. But when I tried to argue this point in one of my videos, it fell apart so quickly, so utterly, that I slipped into denial. Here I thought I had formulated my argument so well that when one single solitary comment was enough to destroy it completely, I actually winced. Now don't get me wrong, I'm really glad it happened. This was a key point I needed to understand for my own good. But it fucking hurt. You see, my argument was, it cannot be proven that X does not exist. Therefore it could exist. Therefore it is rational and wise to bear the possibility in mind. That comment pointed out that there are countless possibilities that can be substituted for X without violating the argument. Fairies, dragons, unicorns, pixies, gnomes, leprechauns, people three meters tall, Jimmy Hoffa's extra spleen, you name it. None of these can be proven not to exist. Therefore they all could exist. Shall we fixate on each and every one of them? Now I can be pretty stubborn. When safely, comfortably tucked away in my cocoon of denial, I don't like being disturbed there. That character and I had to go around about this a few times, but this point finally sank in. We got to a point where I realized I could predict how he would respond to the arguments I was making. But then I realized that being able to predict them did not help me to counter them. You see, in this case, I was giving God belief special treatment. I was holding belief in one or more uninvolved and unidentifiable deities to one standard, and belief in all these other mystical beings to another. I was applying special pleading. Now don't get me wrong. The term agnostic still describes me as accurately as it ever has, but I don't rely on it because it's really too broad a term to be of use. 
I don't care what claims clergy, apologists, theologians, and wannabelievers are fond of making. None of us have any way of knowing if any gods, dragons, gnomes, or magic traffic lights exist. Therefore, the significance of the words, I am agnostic, is the same as that of the words, I am human. Here is a statement I can make in total sincerity. I am an agnostic. Ah, but wait. Here is another declaration I can make with sincerity which is in no wise diminished. I am an atheist. I do not know, but I do not believe. I recognize that the existence or non-existence of any gods cannot be proven, but I also recognize that God belief is irrational. Making a point now of doing the best I can to avoid special pleading, I am an atheist by necessity. I could begin with the position that all religions are true, but then every religion has at one time or another declared every, declared every other religion false. So if every religion is true, then every religion truthfully declares every other religion false, which makes every religion false. This, of course, means that every religion falsely declares every other religion false, which makes every religion true. Of course, in the interest of escaping this loop, or to avoid falling into it in the first place, it makes much more sense to begin with the position that every religion is the product of its time and place of origin. I recognize that every religion has gotten certain things right and certain things wrong, but the only way to identify which parts of which religions fall into which category is to rely on sources outside of the religion in question. At this point, out of logical necessity, one is no longer relying on the religion in question for guidance. I could begin with the position that all gods exist, unless someone can prove otherwise, and everyone that I don't worship is one who could send me to hell or the underworld for not worshipping him or her. But in that case, worshipping would be all that I would get done. I wouldn't, I wouldn't even have time to eat, sleep, or brush my teeth. I could also begin with the position that a specific one, or a specific few, or a specific group of the gods who have been worshipped by humanity exist. That, however, would be accepting that group until they are proven not to exist and not accepting any of the rest until they're proven to exist, which would mean holding different claims to different standards, which is special pleading. The only reasonable, rational, practical option remaining is to hold the position that no gods exist until one or more of them do a superior job of meeting the same standards of argument all the rest are subjected to. That is, I hold this position until one or more can be bothered to pop in and say hello, and maybe even go so far as to actually shake my hand. I give Christ the very same treatment I give Poseidon.